Uh, in the world order, you have a, a top hierarchy of uh, first-tier rank of dynastic families composed, really, of the old surviving aristocracies of Europe, uh, the black nobility, they're called. They're called the black nobility because they came from the darker strain in uh, the aristocracy of Europe. And the old uh, Viking, blue-eyed, blonde aristocrats, more or less, were pushed into the background, or they intermarried with the black nobility and became contaminated. And this is what you have. Uh, of course, the surviving royal family in Europe today is the royal family of England. And they have been black nobility since the 12th century, when the Este family of uh, Italy married into the British royal family. So uh, the first rank, uh, first tier is the old aristocracies of Europe plus what they call their Hofjuden, their court Jews, which are the Rothschilds and families of that nature who are able to raise money for them and keep them functioning. Now in the second tier of world dynastic families, uh, the world order, you have the families who themselves are enormously rich and powerful, but their duty is to serve as courtiers to the first tier of dynastic families. And the people in that category are the Rockefellers, the Harrimans, the Morgans, and so forth. Now you have a third tier of uh, uh, dynastic families who serve the second tier. They're never allowed to approach the real top people in the first tier, but they can only serve through the serving the second tier. And these are families like uh, the uh, George Herbert Walker Bush family. Uh, George Herbert Walker was president of W.A. Harriman Company, and uh, their, the Bush family's entire career in banking was to serve the Harriman interests, who in turn served the Rothschilds. So uh, that's why I began to use the term about Bush as a uh, dynastic family in the world order of the third tier. And it was picked up, and I see it popping up everywhere. They say, George Bush is a third tier family. They don't even know what they're talking about. They don't explain it because they don't know how to explain it. But that's uh, at least it. Uh, much of my material, by the way, Bob, uh, I see popping up all over the place because it goes into the system and is sort of piped in and begins to be picked up by people. For instance, uh, columnists like uh, Pat Buchanan and James uh, Kilpatrick uh, every once in a while, they'll pick up something of mine. Pat Buchanan had a column not long ago in which he denounced the uh, Trotskyite uh, wing, the neoconservatives of the Republican Party, which I had been speaking about publicly for about five years, and, so, and which I describe in my book, of The Rape of Justice. I give you the whole story about that takeover. And um, as I say, it's uh, rather flattering to see these things come out in public uh, piecemeal, Mm -hmm. They never really explain it, and of course they never attribute it to my writings, but at least it's getting around, and that's helpful. Now, we've had this last election, of course, uh, H. Ross Pro did an excellent job, a wonderful job. Uh, he only collected 20%, though, because of the fact, I think a lot of people in uh, the media themselves always kept saying, well, a third party can't win. And yet we've had a two-party system in this country, but some people say it's just one party, it's the... Democrat wing of the Communist Party or the Republican wing of the Communist Party. Could you explain that? Could that be true at all? Well, it's been true since 1933. You see, you had a man in a wheelchair running for governor of New York named Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, Delano Roosevelt, and uh, he was the grandson of the most successful opium uh, dealer in uh, Hong Kong named Warren Delano. And, uh, you know, the, the myth about the great fortunes uh, of this country is that these were hard-working people who saved their money and built uh, important businesses. The fact is most of the old family money in this country came from dealing in drugs and dealing in slaves, the slave trade and the world opium trade. Mm -hmm. And of course the Roosevelt, uh, the Delano Roosevelt's... Uh, well, that we're, we've become the slaves now. <laughs> They're still well, dealing in slaves. Right? Well, what has happened in this country and over the world is we have reverted through the world order We've reverted to the Middle Ages. We have a feudal system now in which uh, you might say futile system because of the way it works, but uh, it's a feudal system in which uh, you have the serfs and you have the lords in the castle, and that's it. And there's not to be anything in between. You see, the great uh, achievement of Western culture, of European culture, was to produce, uh, to move from the Middle Ages into modern times by producing a middle class, 
a hard-working, thrifty, sober uh, group of people who created businesses and uh, uh, went into production and uh, they built homes and uh, businesses and so forth and they brought prosperity. But you see, uh, when you're very rich, you don't like to see prosperity. I mean, what's the good of having money when everybody else has money, you see? So the world order, they want to see everybody poor. Then, you, then they can control them, is that it? They can control them and also, it's much more satisfying to have a, a castle and a yacht if you know that all the peasants down there will never have these things and compete mm. with you, you see. Right. So the world order is a monopoly system. And uh, they make their money out of monopolies. Uh, and uh, with their monopoly, they control the governments, they control the banks, and uh, they set their prices. And uh, it's an extortion system, really. Just like the Internal Revenue Service in this country, I traced it right back to the Middle Ages, the black hand of the mafia. Mm. And uh, all of their techniques and all of their goals come right out of the black hand. Well, I'd like to give that IRS a backhand for their <laughs> black-handedness, to tell you the truth. How do we uh, turn this around? If they have, if they allegedly have the power, and money is power, Eustace, and a lot of people say, they've got all the money, you know, they have control of the government, they have control of the Republican Party, Democrat parties, they have the bureaucracy. Well, how do you fight a little bit of strength like that? Well, I have to disagree with you there, Bobby Lee. Money is not power. Knowledge is power. Okay. And unfortunately for the world order people, information is catching up with them. You have uh, channels of mass communication. In fact, if we were to get on national television with 30 minutes of what we're talking about today, you would have a revolution in this country. Mm -hmm. They can only survive by desperate defensive measures, by keeping us from reaching the American people with the truth. And of course, we're fighting to, to uh, despite it. And uh, that's been what my 50-year career has been, to bring the knowledge that I have and that Ezra Pound imparted to me almost 50 years ago to the American people. And of course, the reason you had this great turnout in this uh, particular election that just passed was the American people knew something was wrong and some of this material was leaking out. Uh, you know, I've circulated over a million books and over a thousand articles uh, in the past 50 years. <coughs> and uh, the information is getting there. Even though, to the national media, I still do not exist. I'm a non-person. And, and that's one of the things that they try to do, Eustace, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, they either smear people or they don't allow them to be able to present their knowledge. There's so many different ways, techniques that they have that are certainly on, on American. Well, the publishing industry in this country is totally owned. In fact, one of the biggest influences in the publishing industry in this country is the uh, Central Intelligence Agency. They commission and have written and published and circulate around 200 books of political propaganda a year, which makes the CIA the biggest publisher in the United States, secretly. And of course, there is no Central Intelligence Agency. It's a branch of the British Secret Intelligence Service, SIS, which was established in 1694 as a necessary adjunct of the Bank of England. So uh, we have never had a government intelligence service. What we have is a branch of the Bank of England, uh, which, as I say, uh, has uh, commissioned and published these 200 books a year of political propaganda, which are distributed to all the universities, and every professor in our universities knows that you have got to use these political propaganda books of the CIA as your teaching textbooks. You have Zygmunt Brzezinski. He used to be one of the right-hand men of Jimmy Carter. Henry Kissinger with Richard Nixon. These people hardly speak English to some degree, but yet they're controlling, in many cases, the foreign policy of this country. Tell them, you know, foreign policy of this country, I mean, it's really been foreign as far as I'm concerned. Could you explain why? Well, uh, you're talking now about the field of lecturing and public speaking, which is one of my fields. And um, interestingly enough, the fees paid to public speakers in the United States are uh, proportion inversely to how much information they give to the American people. Now, speakers who get between $35,000 and $100,000 per speech get up and give speeches in which they say absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And then when you have people on my level who give you solid information by the ton, uh, we get practically no fees whatsoever because they don't even want us to ever appear in public. 
We ask you to uh, support the Bobby Lee and the Eustace Mullins Fund, and we will be bringing you in the future other videos, and we want you to go ahead and purchase as many of Eustace's books as possible. There is a number that you can call right now. It'll be on your screen, and you call, and you order some of those books, and this is for the posterity of your children, your family, your future. You need to know. Thanks for being with us today on The Bobby Lee Show. And Eustace Mullins, thank you, sir, for being a part of America and the great patriot that you are. And the fact that the bad guys most